Peace, family. Peace. And we are finally live. Woo, it's going to be a great show today, y'all. It's going to be a great show. I see y'all in the chat. Y'all in the chat heavy. Shout out to everybody in the chat. I know y'all are excited about tonight's show. I think this is the first time I have th- I have I had this gentleman on live. I've done an interview with him where I went to the mosque, but this is our first live. I'm about to introduce him in a second. But before I do, as usual, family, let's get to a quick commercial and we'll be back in about uh, 60 seconds, all right? On Saturday, September 23rd from 2 to 8 p.m. at the Alkaline Oasis in Brooklyn, Baba Ashraf Kwesi and Mira Kwesi returns to Brooklyn, New York after four years. Get your early bird tickets right now by texting 347-496-1022. Remember, they'll be teaching about the ancient history of Africa, Kemet, and also they're going to touch on Cleopatra. So get your tickets, 347-496-1022. All right. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, gods and goddesses, I want to welcome back to the platform student minister, Dr. Wesley Muhammad. Welcome, my brother. Thank you, Black God. I I appreciate you. I'm as a person and I appreciate you as a professional what you're doing with this platform. Allah has blessed you to have a very influential platform. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Uh, Let's get to it. Brother, you've been... um, Pretty prophetic with a lot of things you you said throughout the years. Um, the people we had a show last week that got posted that got canceled. Uh, family, we're gonna have that show. We're gonna be dealing with marijuana. We're gonna have that show probably in about a month, so we'll keep you updated on that. I know a lot of people were um, excited about it, and they was like, "Damn, what happened to that show?" We'll be doing that in uh, probably the end of August, beginning of September, and we will keep you updated on that. Today's show is of utmost importance. I seen Dr. Wesley uh, make a post on Instagram, and I immediately said I have got to talk to this brother about this topic to give the people some context on as to what I'm talking about, uh, Dr. Wesley. Let me read a brief article about um, this whistleblower. Uh, let me share this screen. Give me a second, family. Give me a second. Okay. <clears throat> so... Uh, this was all over the news, but people were busy talking about Lizzo and bananas and sh- stuff like that. So this didn't get much attention with the entertainment dominating the news uh, these days, you know. But listen, a UFO whistleblower tells South Carolina Representative Nancy Mace, U.S. has non-human biological remains during the hearing. So the UFO whistleblower David Grush testified on the oath Wednesday that the U.S. government has recovered non-human biological remains from the crash site of an unidentified craft. Rush made a revelation during questions from South Carolina's U.S. Representative Nancy Mace at an oversight committee hearing. So um, he goes on to say that um, he told the members of the panel that he had knowledge of a multi-decade unidentified anomalous phenomena, I hope I'm saying that right, retrieval program included what he called biologics, Uh, He's one of three retired military veterans who testified about UAPs, commonly known as UFOs, warning that the sightings are a national security problem and that the government has been too secretive about them. So I'm going to end that there. And I want to read to you. uh, I want to read to you what Dr. Wesley wrote on Instagram that made me say, wow, I got to have a conversation with this brother. So uh, Dr. Wesley Muhammad said on his Instagram Y'all all need to go follow him, Wesley Muhammad, on Instagram. The pilots are not non-human grays. They are black humans by Wesley Muhammad, PhD. Wow, that's bold. <laughs> oh, I love this. The is- intelligence community uses two types of covert misdirection, misinformation and disinformation. Misinformation is fact presented as fiction and disinformation is fiction presented as fact. There are also two types of disinformation, simplified and enhanced. Whereas simplified disinformation often takes the form of lie by omission, enhanced disinformation, operations of our fabricated documents or stage production. A classic case of uh, of Ed, uh, E.D., is the 1995 alien... Enhanced enhanced disinformation. Okay, okay. Is the 1995 alien autopsy film. Last week's subcommittee hearing on unidentified uh, uh, aerial phenomena can be considered... A recent example of um, uh, um, enhanced disinformation on the big stage, an intelligence operation was carried out. 
there was truth spoken, but only to lend credence to the lie, which is the aim of the stage production. This is a counterintelligence modus operandi. Career intelligence officer David Gross told the world that the U.S. has spent the last several decades attempting to reverse engineer the technology found among the wreckage of crashed UFOs and have recovered non-human bi biologics of the UFO pilots. In our next episode of Opening the Files with Dr. Wesley, we will demonstrate that while landing and crashed UFOs are in the possession of U.S. and that she does indeed have biological samples extracted from the bodies of the pilots of these crafts these biologics were extracted from entities that were explicitly identified as human and as black non-human biologics is the disinformation no there are not numerous different alien races flying these crafts it's only the black gods <laughs> i'm gonna end it there well, well i just want to um let me say this the most honorable Elijah Muhammad will neither be mocked nor made a liar. Very, very interesting, Dr. Wesley Muhammad. Um, I'm, I'm gathering different perspectives on this whole UFO thing, the alien thing. Uh, and I'm very much interested in the Nation of Islam's perspective. Uh, Elijah Muhammad got a lot of us interested in, in it back in the day. And um, a lot of black people don't like talking about it. They feel as though it's not an important topic considering everything, all the problems we have down here on earth. So I, for one, am very interested in this topic. And that's why my channel talks about these things. So with that being said, Dr. Wesley Muhammad, could you explain to us this, uh, this, 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 what you're saying as these are black gods that are on these ships? What do you mean by that, my brother? Thank you, Brother Rich. First, <clears throat> let's take it back. Yes. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad is the origin and the true source of our understanding of these craft commonly originally known as UFOs now tagged as UAPs. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad was informed and showed this ship by his teacher, Master Bart Muhammad in 1931-1932 and has been teaching the existence of this mother wheel, a huge wheel, half mile by half mile in diameter, which is a human built planet. It's also and primarily a military weapon. It serves as a aircraft carrier of <clears throat> sorts. There are 1500 smaller wheels on this craft these are what is commonly referred to as flying saucers or flying discs. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad told the world about these craft and told the FBI when they arrested him in May of 1942 and then again in September of 1942. I want to read to you. Yes. Something if I may. Yes, please. So people don't think that I'm sitting here with a bow tie on religious set tripping. Mm -hmm. It is a fact that you must come to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad to get a proper understanding of what these things are flying around in our skies and able to with ease violate the most secure airspace, not just of the U.S., but of every sovereign nation on the planet Earth. Professor Michael Lee, in a very important article, said these words, <clears throat> documented, mm -hmm. quote, Uncle Sam, the U.S. government, yes. accorded the mother plane high priority Mm. During the time of Elijah Muhammad, the mother plane became a recurrent theme in the secret surveillance activities of the FBI and its offshoot, COINTELPRO. The FBI files on Elijah Muhammad confirm this observation. The various memos, letters, and reports that resulted from the surveillance of Elijah Muhammad make for fascinating re reading 
especially when it comes to the mother plane. The FBI files on Elijah Muhammad are such that the mother plane becomes time and again the subject of close scrutiny. The U.S. government was confronted by the power of the mother plane and his craft in February of 1942. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In May, President Roosevelt ordered the interning, the arrest of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. They arrested him first in D.C. They confiscated <laughs> his graphs or drawings, depiction of the mothership, mm -hmm. and they interviewed him, and he gave them information regarding the mothership that they had unsuccessfully confronted in May over on the West Coast, the battle, the so-called Battle of LA was not about a single flying saucer. The main actor of that four-hour drama was mm -hmm. the mothership wow. who went, did two lines down the coast, then back up the coast, mm -hmm. toying with America's military. When the Honorable Elijah Muhammad explained to them in May, <coughs> of the mothership when they rearrested him in September of 1942 mm -hmm. they confirmed to him the truth of what he told them so the government and in the words in the final words of Professor Michael Lee mm -hmm. the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan represent the capstone of this study of UFOs. <clears throat> that is the point that is a fact, that's the point to open with because everybody's trying to hijack this knowledge now. Mm -hmm. People have who have mocked the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam for decades because we teach about this plane and UFOs. Mm -hmm. They mock us as tinfoil hid people. Mm. Now, the overwhelming e evidence is compelling acceptance of the reality, but people, instead of want, instead of giving credit where credit is properly due, people want to hijack this reality and then twist it, make it into what it ain't. Now, there's a reason, I will close, there's a reason the government has the people believing that these craft are flown by non-human extraterrestrial biological entities. They want the people to associate this technology with reptilians or greys or Nordics all to disguise the truth of these craft that these are black humans, divine humans, God, Asiatic black men who are behind this craft, who are piloting these craft, and who have control of the bombs that are carried on this craft. I guess the question, Dr. Wesley, a lot of people will have is that uh, if these are black gods, if these are um, Asiatic black, Asiatic black divine gods on this mothership, people would want to know why aren't there more contact stories? You have uh, the honorable, most honorable Elijah Muhammad. You have uh, Farad Muhammad. Um, why wouldn't these divine beings contact their cousins, their, their people on planet earth more often so that we would know because they know we are completely lost in the wilderness of North America. So why isn't there more contact between them and between the masses of the black man and woman across America? One, there is a great deal of contact information mm -hmm. regarding the true reality of the pilots of these craft. Mm -hmm. We will get into just a touch of them. I'm going to lay all of it out in my show, Open the, F the Files with Dr. Wesley. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. of it we will give to the audience. But there is tremendous material validating 
the truth of what we are saying that these are black humans who are most credibly associated with these craft. The stories that get all the press are the fabricated stories, okay. are the bogus close encounters of the third and fourth time. These are government fabricated encounters and they are fabricated in order to misdirect the public. So the true credible encounters <laughs> don't hit the airwaves, but all researchers, mm -hmm. investigators that's worth their salt are familiar with the credible, genuine accounts of experiences with the pilots of these ship, ships, both dead and alive. So the answer to your question is, they have been such encounters, mm -hmm. but the popular narrative, the ufological narrative, the orthodox narrative, of the UFO or ufological community is a narrative that has been shaped, has been guided directly <clears throat> by the U.S. intelligence apparatus. Mm. And so it purposely centers grays and reptilians mm. as a misdirection, a disguise to conceal the truth of the black Gods. Now, I'm going to say this and I'm going to let you in. And we will go at this. I'm going to throw it out there and then we can go out after it in a minute. Mm -hmm. Specifically in what we're going to document. Both the green reptilians and the greys. They are specifically fabricated as white supremacy tropes mm -hmm. the reptilian myth is a deliberate uh, character to not just disguise the black pilots but to demonize them there's a specific reason why they are green green reptilians right the other side of that coin is the grays are specifically <clears throat> white folks attempt to take credit for mm. the technology. The gray alien is nothing but a futuristic evolved super white man. That's <laughs> how that image originated. Wow. And the green alien originated as a demonizing of black people. And so these two tropes, the reptilian, the green alien is the demonization of the authentic black pilots of these craft and the great aliens is white folks usurping the role of the black gods who are actually responsible. Well, Dr. Wesley, what would you say to uh, people who have had, say they've had contact with greys and that they are white? or I've had contact with these aliens in that they were non-black. What would you say about their particular experience? Yes. Let me take your time, brother. This is a very important matter. Mm -hmm. Allow me to answer that question in a very scenic route, taking a very scenic route, but it's a very important yes, sir. route. Mm -hmm. I mentioned in that post that you read from me. Yes. Two types of counterintelligence disinformation mm -hmm. operations simplified and enhanced mm -hmm. those who <clears throat> recount their experience with grace they are either the victims of or 
operatives of a particular enhanced dis disinformation operation. Mm -hmm. I hope you got that. Yes. Those <laughs> who recount personal encounters with graves mm -hmm. associated mm -hmm. with these ships mm -hmm. are either the victims of a particular enhanced disinformation operation or are parties to that operation. So bear with your brother. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Mm -hmm. In October 1989, in London, a group of persons who worked for the Home Office, mm -hmm. which is the governmental office of the UK, this was a group that informally investigated the UFO phenomenon. They were brought to a meeting at an office in the Ministry of Defense. The meeting was conducted by two men, an officer from Britain's defense intelligence staff and an American CIA <clears throat> agent. This group was shown with no commentary and no explanation. This group in October 1989 was brought to a room and shown a film. Mm -hmm. A grainy, archaic, poor quality film. On the film, a group of individuals in radiation suits approach a body laying on a makeshift table. It's not a human body, but it's humanoid. It has a big head, has black, big black almond-shaped eyes, and gray skin. Over the course of two hours, this group of home office staff watch a gross dissection of this humanoid body. After two hours of watching this gross scene, the last scene of this film mm -hmm. focused or diverted to a cell wherein there was a similar creature but alive. Alive but cowering as if the creature knew what it was about to experience. Mm -hmm. Then the movie ended. This group of home office staff in October 1989 was later informed that the film was a product of a particular joint Anglo-American operation, specifically a top secret program of disinformation that involved the Royal Air Force's Provost and Security Services, PNSS, in collaboration with the U.S. Air Force Office of Special Investigations and elements of the National Security Agency. This Anglo-American Joint Disinformation Operation this home office staff was informed, was intended to seed disinformation to the American and the British public regarding or with fabricated but very official looking documents, documents that have a careful combination of fact and fiction. And the point of this joint Anglo-American disinformation operation was to muddy the waters regarding the truth that was coming out 
regarding the Roswell incident of July 1947. Mm -hmm. The reason this is important in answer to your question, that October 1989 film that was part of the joint Anglo-American disinformation operation later found its way in the very infamous 1995 Santilli alien autopsy that was aired on Fox News and that deeply impacted the world's perspective on what an alien looks like. The Santilli film, mm. the alien autopsy, which has been proved to be a hoax, but it's more than a hoax. It literally used the um, disinformation operation film that was shown in October 1989. So, because that particular operation was so successful, people were convinced that graves are real. And here is a real live autopsy that we know Roswell is real. There's too much smoke for there to not be fired. So the people instinctively knew Roswell was real. And so the government successfully redirected the people's attention and got convinced them that Roswell was about gray aliens when in fact it was about black men. We'll get to that. Mm. Roswell was about black men. Mm. But through this fabricated film, the certification, if you will, of the Greys as a bona fide entity was achieved. And so people today already convinced that the Greys are real. Mm -hmm. There are a whole spectrum of circumstances, of experience encounters they can have that their mind, their consciousness, or their subconsciousness will import a gray alien into that encounter. But that don't make it less of a fabrication. So mm -hmm. while I won't, it's just like asking me, what do you say, Brother Wesley? about Christian men and women who swear they've been called by God. Mm. They may, <laughs> but you know, the a man by his works. And I can tell this man what he doing and he's saying, it ain't God that called him, but I can't deny his experience. Mm -hmm. If someone said they saw the Loch Ness Monster, I won't argue anybody's experience because their experience might be a genuine experience, but there's a whole spectrum mm -hmm. of reasons to account for that experience that does not necessarily mean the Loch Ness Monster is real. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Let me uh, ask you this, uh, Dr. Wesley Muhammad. Um, you saying that these are black gods on this, on this mothership. Um, there was a movie that came out, Hidden Figures. And this was during the height. Uh, this movie was about the height of the space race. And the movie was centered around three black women who were basically like human computers. They was doing their thing over at NASA. And that movie helped people to understand the importance of black women and the technology that we possess inside and how we're able to create and do things at a, at a certain level. My question to you is, is there any connection with all the talk about missing black women? Can they possibly be going, are they being abducted by this mothership to do something else on the mothership? Is there any connection there? Because hey. we just automatically think it's sex trafficking, but it's something a little more deeper than that. No, let's stay with sex trafficking yeah. for, for this reason. A very important, important confession. When I say, when it is said 
that most of ufological orthodoxy mm. is a deliberate fabrication by the U.S. and British intelligence apparatus. Mm. We're not just throwing out conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. Bill Moore, one of the most important early UFO researchers, he wrote the seminal book on the Roswell incident or co-wrote it. He was, through the 80s, really the most important UFO researcher. And then in 1989, he mounted the rostrum at a MUFON conference. Mm -hmm. And before the audience of enthusiastic UFO truthers, mm -hmm. he exposed that all of this time, he had been working with the U.S. Air Force disinformation campaign. Mm. He identified the role that he played in the intelligence officers that he was a conduit for in spreading disinformation. And on that, in his confession, is on video. And while he is confessing to his role, willing role, in spreading disinformation for the U.S. Air Force's intelligence unit, he lists the disinformation that he helped to spread. It involved so alleged exchange programs between extraterrestrials and humans, which later evolved into Operation Serpo, I think it's called. But he also said the abduction story that became popular in American pop culture was a fruit of this disinformation campaign. Now, it is not, I'm not saying that there are no genuine quote unquote abduction stories, but no, black women are being abducted and abused by the mothership, that is absolutely the white man abusing our women, and that's very dangerous. This is why that is an excellent example of the danger of redirecting the mothership and the intelligence behind it to out of space into aliens because the white man can hide his evil behind the false grays or green aliens. So I'm gonna add another point, very important. Ben Rich, second director of Lockheed Skunk Works, which we have been hearing about in these recent hearings because Skunk Lockheed Skunk Works was given some of the wreckage material to examine. Okay. Ben Rich was the second director of Lockheed Skunk Works from 1975 to 1991. Shortly before his death in 1995, Ben Rich said this. He revealed this, quote, there are two types of UFOs, the one we build and the ones they build. By mm. they, he's talking about the originators of the UFOs, the black guys, but he is acknowledging that these skies mm -hmm. are populated, genuine UFOs, but also by the government's UFOs because they've had a duplication program in effect since 1933. 33? So they had UFOs <laughs> flying up there and so if there are some UFO abduction cases involving black women and the abuse of black women it is not the black gods it is not our 
UFOs that are responsible for that. It's Satan's UFOs that is doing that because there was such a high premium on the black woman for organ harvesting purposes, for sex trafficking purposes. Satan absolutely would use his UFOs to conduct very savage operations and attribute it <clears throat> or make the people think that it's those whom the most honorable Elijah Muhammad were talking about. Do you think, uh, well, you know, before we continue, I want to post uh, Dr. Wesley Muhammad's um, cash app. If you would like to contribute to this brother's research, this brother's a thorough researcher, um, I want you to support his cash app. I'm going to put it on the screen right now. That his cash app is dollar sign D Dr. Wesley, D R W E S L E Y. Once again, I appreciate this brother's research and what he brings to, to the community, and also that the brother's continuing to spread the information that the most honorable, Eli the, um, uh, honorable Elijah Muhammad gave to us many, many years ago. Uh, so I want to thank you for that, uh, Dr. Wesley, and I know the people is going to uh, support. Um, the next thing I want to ask you about, well, let me ask you this, Dr. Wesley. And we can verify the blackness of these pilots. Have FYI. I'm very interested in knowing, have you had contact with this mothership? I have not. And people ask me, I have not, no, or a baby plane. And people ask me, how would I respond? And in light of, so I answer like this. If I, Brother Rich, were to walk out of my front door tomorrow morning mm -hmm. and there's a nice shiny flying saucer greeting me, it has the dimensions. It's 50 to 100 feet in diameter. Mm -hmm. Some Muslims would think I would be overjoyed and I would run and embrace. Not me. I would have to wait. I would take a long pause because I don't know if this is friend or foe. Mm -hmm. I don't know in the words of Ben Rich, if that is one of ours <laughs> or one of theirs. So the, Satan has complicated the matter and unfortunately, the ufological community has become so gullible, Brother Rich. Mm -hmm. It has. I see some comments about what the conscious community knows, but with due respect, the conscious community has become too gullible and has preferred the exotic to the verifiable. Mm. So I have not had an experience yet. My wife, my mother-in-law, but not me. Mm. That's interesting. So the woman in your in your in your family, they've had uh, um, an encounter, but you haven't. They've seen yes. Now, now, now. Yeah. Be real clear. Have I looked up in the sky and saw some weird stuff? Yes. But for reasons, I think what I've said so far to help you understand, I'm not quick to say I, I see a UFO because I know the skies are crowded mm -hmm. with ours and theirs. You know, Dr. Wesley, you know, what you saying, you know, the skies are crowded with the ufos but we can't when we look up we don't see them you see no, you give that. no 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 i didn't i didn't say that well you, you don't see them well, well you said you don't see them no i said i don't i'm not quick to attribute identify them as i see That's... and it may very well be mm -hmm. but because of what i explained about me and what i understand you won't hear me quick to say i've had an experience I've seen or even had an experience 
mm-hmm. with a UFO. Like I just said, if I was to walk out my door tomorrow be, and bump into the edge of a flying disc, my vetting process would be more extensive than others before you hear me say, I've had an experience with the baby fly. You know, Dr. Wesley, sometimes when I am looking for something, like let's say I lose my keys and I'm in a nervous state or I'm in a frantic state or just a not a not a not a calm state, the keys could be right in front of me and I and I don't see them. And I and I and I and I'm and I'm looking all over and I don't see them. Then I come back a little later. And I'm like, how did the keys get right there? They're right here. How, how did they get right here? And I'm like, have they been there the whole time? Because I just looked all over the place and I didn't see them. But I was in that state. My question to you, given that example, would be, do you think the reason, because Black people are in a continuous survival state. We're not in a calm state at all. We're constantly pumping cortisol throughout our body. My question to you, Dr. Wesley, would be, do you think the reason Farrakhan wanted to introduce Dianetics to the people is because Dianetics will get us out of that frantic survival mode where we're pumping cortisol into a, a, another mental plane where we are able to see things. We are able to, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, connect with, with, with the bigger picture in life. Do you think Dianetics was a part, is somehow connected to this UFO thing because it was, uh, was going to allow us to open up our minds and get, av- get out of the survival mode that we are in? Well, first, the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan introduced Dianetics to his student laborers Mm -hmm. because he saw something in us. He saw a particular need in us that he thought this technology could help. Now, anyone in the nation or outside the nation is free to participate, but I want to be clear because that's a false narrative that's out there in terms of the minister introducing it to the people. He had a specific intent with what he introduced, who he introduced it to, and the reasons. Dear brother, no. The I don't I have no knowledge of any connection between the use of Dianetics and the experience of the wheels. No, sir. Mm -hmm. Do you think I've heard people say that uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is on one of them ships right now as we speak? Is that what you would agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, of course, we... From the the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan, his declaration to the world in 1981, from that day to this, we stand on it that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, a black god, Mm -hmm. escaped the death plot in 1975. He was not killed. He escaped in a divine operation, intelligence operation. The white man is not the only one that engages in intelligence covert operations. The white Illuminati studied under and learned from the black Illuminati. So Mm. the most honorable Elijah Muhammad escaped the death plot in 1975 and is alive and in power. The, his teacher, the savior, Master Far Muhammad, who is the architect of this craft, the mothership. He is Mahdi. He is a lot in person. He is also who the Roosevelt administration of 1940s, early 40s, Mm. was looking for under the name Rudra, Rudra Kalkrin. Mm-hmm. Rudra Kalkrin was the last, or in, is prophesied as the last king of Shambhala. Mm-hmm. The Buddhist Christ, but Rudra Kalkrin means the one with the iron 
will. His kingship is denoted by his possession with the will that he enters the world on and cuts down his enemies. President Roosevelt, before he had the Honorable Elijah Muhammad arrested in May 1942, the Roosevelt administration sent envoys out looking for Shambhala and looking for the one with the iron wheel, Ruja Kalkun. Mm -hmm. And when he appeared in February, 1942, Ruja Cochran appeared. Mm -hmm. The will appeared in Roosevelt and his administration who were looking for the one with the iron will, but he thought that he would be on his team. Roosevelt and those with him learned that they are on the opposite side of this prophecy. And this is why they bombed Japan the way they did. Hiroshima or Hiroshima and Nagasaki were two of what was planned to be a whole carpet bombing campaign on Japan with nukes because they found out from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that, that the base, the Ruja Cochran's base, mm. or the base of this ship was in Nippon, Japan. Yeah. So absolutely. Wow. So the Roosevelt admin, I'm sorry, Roosevelt was killed. So mm -hmm. Well, he died. Mm -hmm. He was succeeded by his vice president, Truman, who gave the green light to carpet bomb Japan, Nippon, with those atomic bombs, hoping to smoke out the secret base where Ruja Cochran or the wheel in the ships were secreted mm -hmm. or were hidden. Mm -hmm. So that Ruja Cochran, that is Master Fart Muhammad. Mm. His, he's the Lord of the wheel. Mm -hmm. And his second in command, his deputy, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, commands that ship with him today. Absolutely. Mm. You know, when I when I, I remember, you know, before TV fell off and um social and YouTube took over, I will watch sometime I will watch this show Ancient Aliens. I forgot what channel it came on. I think the history channel or something like that. This is back in like oh 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 five, oh six, oh seven. And they always talked about Hitler and the aliens. I'm always hearing about Hitler and the aliens, Hitler talking to the aliens, Hitler and this technology, Hitler and that's that. Some truth. There's some truth. There's Talk to me about that. Truth. Talk to me about that. There's, what's, there's what's, a or two. what's up with that? Did Hitler know about this? Like Roosevelt knew about this mother plane and the mothership? He was up on that? So, 1947, and before we leave, I, I want to. Um, mm. Go a little deeper with the Roswell incident of 1947. Okay. But what I want to say about it right now is the general public is mistaken when they attribute 1947 or identify 1947 as the time when these craft came into the possession of the West. Allah, now let's be clear. This craft can't accidentally crash. The pilots of these craft are so skillful. It is impossible for them to accidentally crash. However, as the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan teaches us, and the facts bear him out, Allah gifted these craft to the West for them to study so they would know the limitation of their one book of mathematical knowledge. The original man has 60,000 books of mathematics. The white man was given only one. And with that one, he has done, he has built a great technological world with it, but 
it is nothing compared to our technology. So Allah did gift them. He gave them a calling card, gave them craft to study so that America and the West will know what they're up against, that they cannot match the might and the technology of God. Now, 1947, Roswell was not the first time Allah gave the West a calling card. The first time was in 1933, and he did not give it to America. He gave it to Italy. Benito Mussolini mm -hmm. and the Italian fascist government, they were the first to be gifted in August of 1933 a landed craft. Italy over Italy, they've seen the mothership and the baby planes. And then they were they came into possession of a landed craft in 1933. David Grush, who we just heard from at the recent hearing, mm -hmm. who you quoted earlier, mm -hmm. he also speaks to this fact. The 1933 landing of the craft now. So Italy in 1933, Mussolini has the first calling card that Allah gave the West. <clears throat> Italy had a pact with Germany, okay. the Axis Pact, which meant that by pact, Hitler's scientists were able to study the craft. Mm. So while it was in the possession of Mussolini in Italy, Hitler and Germany had access to the craft. So they did study it and they were able, this is why they were the first to crack the atom. Mm -hmm. They had atomic energy, weaponized energy before the U.S., their study of the disc that they were gifted in 1933 allowed them to crack the secrets of the atom, allowing them to explode the atom before the U.S. exploded. They, this is why they were able to make disc wingless craft, the so-called Nazi UFOs. All of these were the German duplication program based on the 1933 gift that Allah gave them. And in 1945 was the first time one of their UFOs took flight. Now, as David Gross tells us, mm -hmm. when the war ended, the Axis powers lost. Pope Pius XII, as the U.S. was military was going up in Germany, going up in Japan to get the scientists of death on their side, Operation Paperclip, right? Mm -hmm. Pope Pius XII informed the U.S. authorities of the craft that was in the possession of Italy and Germany. That's how the U.S. the U.S. was able to commandeer that craft, so they had that craft before the 1947 incident. Mm -hmm. Now the different, and so mm -hmm. the Nazis absolutely they were decades ahead of everybody else in terms of military weapons, and it absolutely is because of the access they had of the first calling card that mm. I, I gave them in 1933. They were studying a this. Now, the difference between 33 and 30 and 47 mm -hmm. from what the available data seems to indicate, Allah gave them an intact craft but to study, but there's no record of any bodies associated with the craft. In 1947, 
Allah, for his reasons, decided to gift the West a calling card that included the technology, but also the technicians. Mm -hmm. And so 1947, Roswell is different from 1933, Italy, because the Roswell incident did involve bodies of the pirates. Mm. Wow. Now, this is why there's so much talk association of the Nazis with aliens, not because the aliens visited the Nazis, but because they did best take advantage of the technology of the craft that they were able to study that was in the possession of Italy, but by contract, they had access to it and they <clears throat> capitalized on it more than Italy did. Mm. Mm. I want to take a few questions. I'll tell you at the hour mark, I want to uh, take a couple of questions from the family. I want to thank, we got a pack. We got about 2,700 people in the, in, the, in the audience right now. So shout out to all of y'all in the audience. Uh, once again, if you want to support this brother's research, you can support him via Cash App, uh, dollar sign Dr. Wesley. Uh, yeah, if you would like to support this brother, hit the brother up on Cash App. This has most definitely been an interesting show. Uh, I knew it was going to be an interesting show. You said some things that I definitely want to go, go ahead and research. Put me on to some things that I didn't know. So uh, I, I love this type of talk. Um I guess, well, let me see what the, what the people are doing. I got a question, but let me, let me, because they, they, they got a lot of questions in the chat and we're not going to be here too long. So let me, uh, uh, somebody wants to know, do you think a fake alien invasion will happen? I think the real war of Armageddon is happening right now. Mm -hmm. The real war of Armageddon preempts any fake alien invasion. Mm -hmm. The two powers, the power mm -hmm. represented by the will and those craft will war with the power of this world. Mm -hmm. The Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan announced that Savior's Day that the war of Armageddon has begun. If you've been following the Ukraine, the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Mm -hmm. One common thing, theme when Russia gives briefings, when Ukraine gives briefings, there's heavy UFO activity in the skies over mm -hmm. the Ukrainian conflict. The Ukrainian conflict, the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan teaches us, is will grow into well beyond the borders that are the cause of the conflict right now. We are in the beginning stages of the war of Armageddon, the war between the power behind those craft and the power of this world. So there won't be any time, won't be any space for any fake alien invasion, except I have to qualify that because there's a, and I actually have to say, there's a fake alien invasion afoot right now. Mm -hmm. When we watched the hearings and these intelligence officers are trying to convince us that the skies are being invaded by aliens, that's a fake alien invasion that is being propagated. The truth of the matter is <clears throat> the war, there is a real conflict between the two powers and we are in the beginning stages of that right now. Uh, earlier, you said, uh, Dr. Wesley Muhammad, that you talked about the white Illuminati. And you said that the white Illuminati learned from the black Illuminati. So my question to you, Dr. Wesley Muhammad, would be, what is the black Illuminati's connection with this mothership? If the white Illuminati is against it, what's the black Illuminati's, the black elite's connection to this mothership? 
So let me be real clear on what I mean yes. about black Illuminati. I'm not talking about no boule. Mm, okay. <laughs> I'm not talking about no secret Negro out there. <laughs> The power of the planet yes. for the last 6,000 years has been a secret council. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad described them as the 12 scientists, the 12 major scientists. Mm -hmm. It's a body of 24 scientists. These are 24 black men who are gods, they living gods, not rhetorical gods, but gods, men with the active power of the divine activated within them. Mm -hmm. This government ruled covertly for 66 trillion years. It's a long it time. Was, it's a long time because the mm -hmm. black man is God. And so you have to talk about the beginning of the sun mm. if you want to talk about <laughs> our beginning and then you won't be back far enough. Mm -hmm. Because when we say the black man is God, we're not saying he's an elevated nigga. See, be real clear. Mm. We're saying God in this most literal sense. Mm -hmm. So I digress. The true Illuminati, the true illuminated ones, mm -hmm. is the, that divine circle. Mm -hmm. Now, Adam Weissop and all of those early pioneers of the Bavarian Illuminati or the secret societies of the West, most of them gave an indication of their knowledge of this higher secret order. Mm -hmm. That pressed on them, that weighed on them. Mm -hmm. Madame Blavatsky transformed it into the White Brotherhood, mm -hmm. bastardized it, and mm -hmm. made it palatable to white people. Mm -hmm. This higher order mm -hmm. of the gods. Mm -hmm. Alistair Crawley, the secret mm -hmm. chiefs. These are human gods, but these are the scientists. So mm -hmm. this is the Illuminati, the black Illuminati of which I speak, that circle of black gods that have been ruling the planet for 66 trillion years. Is there a connection between them and the, and the mothership? No. For a very specific reason. That's that's strange. I'm a I know it is. That's what I said. For a very specific reason. They have there is a connection between them and the U. The ancient astronauts, right? Mm -hmm. There, we know that there's evidence of flying vi vehicles of the past, even circular flying vehicles of the past. The Red Veda. So many of the ancient texts mm -hmm. talk about gods flying in the sky. Mm -hmm. Yes, that body has some connection to those ancient craft, but the mothership is what they call in Latin, sui generis. It's profoundly unique. And that body had nothing to do with this particular craft because one of those 12 was the father of Master Fard Muhammad. But Master Fahd Muhammad, once prepared by his father, one of the 12 major scientists, a member of that close society, he went independent of them. And it, the mothership is his solo project, even though there were thousands mm -hmm. of minds involved in this construction. Construction began in 1909. Mm -hmm. in Nippon, the island of Japan. Mm -hmm. It was completed in 1929. Mm -hmm. That body was not involved in this project. This project 
is strictly that of Master Far Muhammad because that body, for lack of a better word, has been retired by him and the body that he is raising here in the West. When a hadith of Prophet Muhammad said, the son of Islam will no longer rise in the east and shine on the west. In the last day, the son of Islam will rise in the west and shine on the east. That also applies to this divine council. The divine council that has been seated in the east in Mecca. It's not the light of the world anymore. The light of the world, the council, is now being built here in the West. Mm. The, the chief of that, the new council of the new Islam is Master Far Muhammad. This, the mothership and the craft, while it may have a form <clears throat> similar in ways to craft of the past, no craft of the past has the technological brilliance and superiority that this craft has. No craft prior to this can accomplish the feats, technological feats, that this craft can. That is attributed to Master Fard Muhammad. The old Black Illuminati is not involved in that. Man, you done took this to a whole nother level. You know, man, this, this done got real interesting. Wow. You speak so highly of uh, Master Farad Muhammad, and we hear about the masters of ancient times. Is he a reincarnation of a Jesus, a Buddha, a Tahuti, a Osiris? Is, is there some reference ancient God or God that we could use this to say, Master Farad Muhammad is a reincarnation of this person? No? Absolutely not. No. Absolutely so he... not. One, we in the nation of Islam, we don't teach reincarnation. Oh, y'all don't? Oh. Absolutely not. Wow. Absolutely not. So you, you just... Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Tahuti, all of the great gods of the past, when they were alive, if we are talking about them today, mm. that means they left their mark. Mm. That means they live on in their legacy. Mm -hmm. But death neutralized their personality, their mm. person. It didn't neutralize their essence, their energy went back up to its source in the space. Their body went back to the source on the ground. But the unifying factor, that third factor, the person of Brother Rich, the person of Wesley, it ain't going to survive death except in our legacy. So there is no personality that can hop into a body thousands of years in the future. We do not believe in that we do not teach that so there is no ancient god whose personality jumped into the womb of baba g master Far muhammad's mother giving birth to the savior in addition in addition there is no god brother rich master Far muhammad does indeed his godship is to be understood in the context of the broader knowledge that man is God. That is why he's God, because man has been God since the creator created himself 76 trillion years ago. The creator of heavens and earth was a man. But Master Far Muhammad is distinct from every single God that preceded him. He was born the first perfect human being with a first perfect knowledge. 
born with the capacity to perfect the creation of the creator that was imperfect. That first creator had a wobble in his nature, had a recessive gene that rendered his whole creation good, but imperfect. Master Far Muhammad was born with a perfect knowledge, which is why he was able to construct the perfect military vehicle. None of the gods before him was able to do that. God damn, I mean, that's, oh shit, you speak, you speak highly of, oh my God, you speak highly of Master Farah Muhammad. You, you said he more perfect than the God that constructed the universe 76 trillion years ago. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. See, wow. Be, when you hear mm. Christians praise God highly, when you walk into a church on Sunday and you hear all of the congregation enthralled in their praise for God, mm. no one finds that odd mm. because no one finds rapturous praise, limitless praise of God to be anything out of the ordinary. The reason what I'm saying might rub you the wrong way is because you think I'm talking about a man who's a peer of other men, but Brother Rich, we don't see men like that. Mm. When we say God is man, we mean that. So mm. if a if God is going to be properly praised, that praise will go to a man, mm -hmm. period. And we are saying that the man who properly deserves the praise of God because he is God in person, is this man, Master Far Muhammad. I'm not praising a simple leader. I'm giving the praise that's due to Allah in the person who came. Now you ask the question though, what, is there anything, well, how I'm interpreting, or at least I'm, I'm choosing to interpret your question. Is there anything in the ancient literature that points to this man in my book the book of God, an encyclopedia of proof that the mm -hmm. black man is God. Mm -hmm. That's precisely what I do is detail mm -hmm. the ancient prophecies of the coming of this figure, this messianic figure, and mm -hmm. all of them point to this man, Master Far Muhammad, so we can conversate with any religion and go to anyone's text and help you see this man. Now, President Roosevelt came face to face with what we're saying. Before him, President Herbert Hoover met with Master Fahd Muhammad directly. You mm. talk about in the ufological community, they talk about exopolitics. When President Herbert Hoover met with Master Far Muhammad around 1931-32, before Herbert Hoover surrendered the White House to President Roosevelt in his first term, when that meeting occurred between President Herbert Hoover and Master Far Muhammad, that is the first example of what they talk about as exopolitics. Mm -hmm. The captain of this craft is meeting with the president of the United States of America. That's exopolitics. But it's not but it's not really exo. That's the problem. These aren't extraterrestrial. 
They can be called supra-terrestrial. Right? They're Earth-based, but they are so far advanced beyond anything that's recognizably terrestrial or Earth. You know, uh, Dr. Esley, Dr. Wesley, this, this is the last question I have, and I'm going to take one more question from the chat, and that'll be that for tonight. Quick question for me. But I want to leave a jewel yeah. for the audience before. Ask that, and then allow me to drop a jewel, and then we'll be off, just as a teaser. All or right, so so President Trump, uh, well, not President, the former President Trump, some people say he still is President. I'm not, I'm not even getting involved with that. But uh, former President Trump signed a $738 billion defense bill on what he called the Space Force. And he was talking about space a lot and creating the Space Force or whatever. And um, a lot of people was like, damn, why Trump want to spend so much money on space? What the hell is happening in space? Trump want to spend his money on space. Now, if you know Hitler knew about certain things and certain ex-presidents knew about certain things, do you think Trump was possibly contacted by some of these forces, and that's why he wanted to move with this $738 billion bill? Not contacted. He was read in. What that and mean? What, that, what do you mean read in? Yeah, that, that's <laughs> intelligence jargon. Okay, okay. That means that all presidents aren't read into the secrets. The UFO matter. Mm -hmm. Now, Timothy Good used the language, it's above top secret. Okay. There's different clearances. Yes. The UFO matter has been elevated <clears throat> to what's called now cosmic top secret. Mm -hmm. That's about 30 clearances above what the president of the United States has access to. Mm. So most presidents aren't read in. You have to, if you don't have, if your post doesn't automatically give you that parent, you can be read in to that matter. You mm. can be given temporary access to a document or a mat, a briefing. And so that's your read in. But President Trump probably was read in to this matter that is way above presidential access. Now, many presidents or a number of presidents before him were read in the preparation for the battle in the sky because that's what that space package is for the battle in the sky he is just continuing a process remember star wars of the reagan administration mm -hmm. and president reagan was very transparent at the united nations when he invoked war with interplanetary beings now mm -hmm. The mothership and this crew can be called interplanetary in a sense that they have the ability to travel anywhere in the universe that they desire. They can go from planet to planet. They mm -hmm. are interplanetary capable, mm -hmm. but they are terrestrially born. Mm. They were Eisenhower, for reasons I will detail in my show, he initiated the Star Wars. Mm -hmm. That was under President Eisenhower's administration. Mm -hmm. So yes, I, I, I'm assuming President Trump was read in to the current situation, which does have a heightened uh, sense of urgency. There is something afoot right now. Mm -hmm. It's different from 20 years ago that is behind all of this new UFO talk. Last question from uh, somebody in the chat. There's so much talk, Dr. Wesley. Uh, wait, hold up. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, there's so much talk on the internet about um, uh, Antarctica. I had a question, but I lost it. Give me one second, Doc. Um, well, I, don't, I can't find the But basically the question, okay, here we go. What is this galactic federation in Antarctica and who are the beings and are they black ancient ones? Yeah, all, all, of, that, all of that is misdirection. Okay, talk to me. The galactic federation, yeah, that's part of the whole project. Circle, the 
exchange between aliens and the government, all of that is misdirection. Now, of course, Antarctica, the mystique of Antarctica goes back to the Nazi regime. Hitler did have a base in Antarctica where he did secret um, projects. Mm -hmm. But the whole Galactic Federation trope it's part of the misdirection that's so characteristic of ufo disclosure most ufo disclosure is government deception mm -hmm. now before we leave allow me indulge me to Indulge me for a few minutes, too, because, you know, I keep talking about these black pilots. Yes, yes. But I don't want people to think that I'm just talking. These black <laughs> human <pilots>. Right, right. <laughs> and the, in the post that you read, I want to offer just a bit of the proof of the point of what I said in that Instagram post that you read. May, may I do that? May I take just a couple minutes to do yes. that? Yes. Go ahead, brother. So no, one can, no one can leave this show and say, Brother Wesley was talking to them black God pilots on Instagram, but when he got on Brother Rich show, he ain't have no evidence of that. Uh-oh. So Uh-oh. <laughs> we... we, we we don't want <laughs> to give the critics the opportunity to say that. So this is what I said on that post. The specific point I want to leave us with. Yes. I said that in our next episode of opening the files with dr wesley we will demonstrate that while landed and crashed ufos and by crashed again i don't mean they accidentally crashed because the pilots of these craft are too skilled no they deliberately crashed in 47 to give america the what America received, as the Honorable Brother Mr. Farrakhan says, these pilots know how to explode a ship on purpose. So by crashed, I mean deliberately crashed, not accidentally crashed. But I said, while landed and crashed UFOs are in the possession of the U.S., and that she does indeed have biological samples extracted from the bodies of the pilots of these crash craft. These biologics were extracted from entities that were explicitly identified as human and as black. Non-human biologics is the disinformation. That the crux of what of the point I wanted to make and that I would like to offer just a tidbit to certify. May I do that? Yes. Yes. So Roswell, the Roswell incident, mm -hmm. it is by government deceit, covert <clears throat> disinformation operation that that incident has become associated with EBEs or graves. Why do I? The truth of the matter is the bodies recovered mm -hmm. were black human bodies. The Asiatic, the bodies of Asiatic black men, as the most honorable Elijah Muhammad described them. What is your proof, <coughs> Brother Wesley? Very important. Miriam Bush, 
was executive secretary of Lieutenant Colonel Harold Warren in 1947, who was the chief medical officer and hospital administrator of the Roswell Army Airfield Military Hospital on base at the time of the Roswell incident, July 1947. In fact, 4th of July weekend, 1947. On the day that the bodies arrived at the base, at the base and in the base hospital, Lieutenant Cor Colonel Warren oversaw the examination of these bodies within the examination room. He pulled his medical secretary, Miriam Bush, into the room with him. Also present and involved were two scientists from Walter Reed Army Hospital in DC. Miriam Bush, when she saw, according to her testimony, to her family and to her associates, when she saw the bodies, she first exclaimed, my God, they're children. <laughs> a closer look at the bodies, however, revealed that they were small, but they were not children. They were adult. She did not describe them as alien bodies. She specifically described them as foreign bodies. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, Miriam Bush, foreign rather than alien? Mm -hmm. She gave a description of the bodies that she saw. And she was traumatized by it. She eventually became an alcoholic. This incident haunted her all her life and she ended tragically. Mm. She described the foreign bodies, not alien, foreign bodies. These were terrestrial bodies. Mm -hmm. She said that they, the bodies looked like there were three bodies. They looked like ancient Chinese mm -hmm. with black skin. Did that. Mm. Miriam Bush, the medical secretary of the chief medical officer who was over that examination, the first examination of the Roswell bodies. Mm. She said the bodies look, they were black skinned and they looked like Sorry. ancient Chinese. They are the bodies of the Asiatic black man. Now, in scholarship and in forensic investigation, we want more than one source. But one, one more point to that. Mm -hmm. The blackness of these bodies, mm -hmm. as described by Miriam Bush, mm -hmm. was so important and so real that the U.S. Air Force, when they published their 231-page rebuttal attempt to push Roswell under the rug, the Roswell Report, case closed, altered by the Air Force. The blackness of those bodies was so important that they had to directly address the matter in their official report. And so they have a section addressing, I don't know if you can see that, the black little body. Wow. And they go out of their way to explain them away. And what mm. how they attempt to explain them away, they don't say they weren't black 
bodies that were examined. They said, well, no, they were Air Force pilots that crashed and their body was burned. Mm. So the blackness of the Roswell bodies is an actual fact. One more point and I, I leave. The second confirmation. Mm -hmm. Now, but what's important is she said that there were Walter Reed scientists who are part of that examination. We now know that stored at Walter Reed Army Hospital. Dr. Charles Starr, the Chief of Forensic Pathology for the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology at Walter Reed, he confirmed that stored at Walter Reed was so alien tissue samples. Right. Those tissue samples that originated from the Roswell bodies where Walter Reed Army scientists took a part of it. They took some of that, the, that biologic material back to Walter Reed and that's been stored in Walter Reed. But the originating body, the mm -hmm. body from which the biologics originated was a black human body. Last point, then I'm done. <laughs> Arthur Stanzel Jr. In 1953, Arthur Stanzel Jr. was a project engineer for the Air Force, and he was also a member of the investigative team of Project Blue Book. Now, everybody knows Project Blue Book is the Air Force's investigation of the UFO phenomenon early investigation. Arthur Stanzel was a member of that investigative team. And in 1953, he was sent to examine as part of his blue book duties. He was sent to examine one of the craft and one of the bodies. Mm -hmm. And or on June 7th, 1973, Arthur Stanzel signed an affidavit. In the affidavit, he reveals his experience. I'm not going to read it all, but I'm going to read a, the most relevant point for our conversation. The first part, he describes the craft that he examines, that he says is not earthly. By earthly, it's the white man is the height of technology on the earth as they know it. So any technology that exceeds the white man, they assume is unearthly. <clears throat> Arthur Stenzel, as he examined the craft, as he lays out in this June 7, 1973 affidavit, he acknowledges that point. And then he turns to the body, a single body that he examined. And this is what he says in his affidavit. I quote, quote, a tent pitched near the object sheltered the dead remains of the only occupant of the craft. It was about four feet tall with dark brown complexion. And it had two eyes two nostrils, two ears, and a small round mouth, very human. It was clothed in a silvery metallic suit and wore a skull cap of the same type of material. It wore no face covering or helmet. 
I certify that the above statement is true by affixing my signature to this document on this seventh day of June, 1973. Now that's the most succinct and accurate description of the bodies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of, but all of the evolution of the myth of the Roswell bodies. First, they made them reptilian. Mm -hmm. Before the Roswell bodies were grazed, they were made reptilian. It was the Nazi scientist, mm. Werner Rondon, who originated because he was sent, he worked, he came over here via Operation Paperclip. Mm -hmm. And he was sent to Roswell to examine the craft. He came back and was tasked with the dis a uh, part of the disinformation operation. He was the one that started spreading the bodies are reptilian. Mm. Then it changed to Gray's, but the authentic description of the Roswell bodies, we just heard it. In just the right, right. Yeah. I'm gonna say it again. It was about four feet tall with dark brown complexion and it had two eyes two nostrils two ears and a small round mouth that's your black god mm. it's black humans that are most credibly associated with this technology it is not no grays by the grays represent the white man the origin of the very image of the gray is H.G. Wells' futuristic image of homo superior. Caucasian people evolving into their highest, most technologically advanced form. And the form that he depicted is his big head, small body, big eye, gray skin, gray. And so when the decision was made to switch out the characters, the green reptilian image was used to, de to demonize mm. the actual black pilots, but then they switched it to another tactic. Instead of just demonizing the true pilots, give Credit. Insert white people as the actual pilots of the craft. Ergo, your graves. So when, when woke people, when conscious people spread the claim, the graves are associated with the, these craft, you are participating in a white supremacy myth. Mm. Very interesting. Very, very interesting, Dr. Wesley Muhammad. Uh, love the way you ended it with reading from the Roswell Report. I did not know that part in the Roswell Report. Like I said, you gave us a lot to research tonight. Uh, once again, I want to thank you for coming on. Thank everybody. We got almost 3,000 people in the chat. Thank you for everybody who was listening tonight. Uh, anything you want to leave the people with? Any contact information? Anything you got coming up? Let them know right now, uh, Dr. Wesley Muhammad. No, I, I'm accessible on social media. Well, first, my website is www.wesleymuhammad.com. Mm. I can, my Instagram is Wesley <clears throat> Muhammad. My YouTube is Wesley Muhammad. I invite all of our listening audience to tune in tomorrow mm. at www.noi.org backslash webcast. Tune in to the Nation of Islam, this Sunday to get a true understanding of this phenomenon. Indeed. With that being said, this is Brother Rich, Black Magic with Dr. Wesley Muhammad. We signing out, family. See you next time. Peace. Peace.